a Christian revolution. If you want a miracle, you've got to expect it to happen. You are the recipients of God's grace and God's blessings, and you rejoice in that reality. Welcome to Life Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson. I have a question for you, and let's be honest here, okay, just for a second. When you see a really overweight preacher, do you kind of scratch your head and kind of wonder? Uh, I mean, I, I do, but I don't say anything because, really, I need to drop 20 myself. And so you feel like a hypocrite if you call this out. But let's face it, you don't hear a lot of sermons on gluttony. Uh, and yet it's right there in the Bible with some other, you know, worse sins that we, you know, we want to talk about all the time. Well, this is a very real issue. So we're going to we're going to deal with it honestly today. Uh, and if you're like me, look, I get it. I, I love my comfort food. I love my snack late at night when I'm watching Netflix or something and or football on the weekend. I get it. I get it. OK, we're not here to cast stones. We're here to help you. And to do that, you don't want to. You don't hear from me, so I've got someone who can actually help you. Steve Arterburn is with me, uh, and he's got a book out called 100 Days to Freedom from Overeating. Steve's the founder and chairman of New Life Ministries, which is the largest faith-based broadcast counseling uh, and treatment center uh, in the country, Christian-based. So we're going we're gonna to approach this thing right, I hope, uh, and maybe... Maybe get me some help in the process. Steve, good to have you on Life Today Live. Well, it's great to be with you, Randy. And um, I hope that um, somebody would hear a little thing that over time could really help them maybe be five pounds or 10 pounds more in shape, just better. You know, the problem always comes when we want everything to change immediately. Right. And it can but it doesn't stay changed very long. No, it when you don't change. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I dropped, I dropped like five pounds. I'm actually about seven pounds uh, this summer when I was over in Europe and then in Africa for out of the country for almost three weeks. Uh, and I was like, oh great! And I think it's kind of coming back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you know, um, I I wrote this book based on my experience of being sixty pounds overweight. And I lost that weight and, you know, 40 years later, it's still off. And, and I did it by uh, not doing anything that I couldn't do the rest of my life. Because then it makes sense. If you can't do it the rest of your life, yeah. then when you stop doing it, your weight's going to come back. And so very gradual little changes. For instance, and this sounds crazy, but it really worked. I... Uh, at the time, smoked a lot and didn't exercise. Hmm. I needed to stop all that so, or start and stop. So rather than do what I had done before, get a gym membership, get up early, go over to the gym, work out, be so sore, I never, ever went back there again. <laughs> right. So here's what I did. I went to bed 30 minutes early, got up 30 minutes early, that's all I did to make room for one day I was going to get up and exercise, but I needed to make a gradual change to make room for that. Hmm. Well, when I did that, I took 30 minutes off of the evening, high calorie consumption, 30 minutes, hmm. replaced it with 30 minutes in the morning to make room for exercise. That right there produced lower calorie intake. So it just was small step after small step and everything I can still do it today. So that's, that's what worked for me. But this book is a book of prayer, devotion, scripture, great quotes that will enhance what, you know, if you're on the Adkins diet, uh, the Chet Adkins diet, where you just pick <laughs> at your food. Um, if you're on the, the, uh, what is it? The North beach diet, yeah, South beach. South Beach. I have the North Pole diet. That's why <laughs> you don't eat anything white, such as sugar, flour, bread, potatoes, things like that, rice, carbohydrates. Anyway, whatever you're on, this is going to help you because it's it's a, a book for the soul. And you do these things for 100 days. I think it's going to be so much easier 
to do the things you need to do to lose and keep the weight off. So just from a spiritual perspective, as I yeah. talked about in the open, I mean, is is this really, is this important? I mean, I think we, we kind of know it is, but we don't say it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you mentioned not a lot of sermons on gluttony. Um, when I lived out in California, I would regularly fill in for Rick Warren mm -hmm. out at Saddleback. And that was a great privilege. He'd call and say, hey, hey, I'm sick. Can you pull this off this weekend? Yes. One time he called and said, I'm not sick, but my computer has a virus. And so <laughs> I can't pull my sermon. Well, anyway, he did the seven deadly sins. And in an act of humility, he called me and said, Steve, I think you would do better to do the sermon on gluttony than me. It just doesn't work. Cause he had a little weight problem there mm -hmm. and, um, and I did, and I was so grateful that he did it, but here's the thing you, you probably are not going to get spiritual enough. We could say to overcome some lifetime habits, genetic predispositions and things like that. This is a great reason to renew and, and, uh, kind of repair your spiritual life but i don't see a lot of people having this great aha spiritual moment or growing in character and this takes care of itself that's that's the main thing it doesn't just take care of itself you really have to be intentional about this now a spiritual awakening uh, will help and it's certainly going to help with uh, lessening conflict which might be the reason you eat too much mm. but it is a spiritual issue but you have to resolve that and do additional things well and what I, I yeah I, and I think most people especially in the church uh especially especially those who deal with it they they don't want to or they just flat out don't view it as a spiritual issue it's, it's the body it's temporary it's gonna you know, it, it's well, corruptible kind of thing, you know. And so they say, oh, I'll focus on the spiritual. And then they let the physical slide. How about this? Make your body a living <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah. How about this? Your body, your body is the, not your soul. Your body is the temple mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, they don't treat it like a temple. They treat it like a a fraternity house <laughs> on and they'll throw anything in there they want to. But I really believe that underneath every morbidly obese person, certainly uh, that chuckles and laughs, there's a tremendous amount of shame yeah. and feelings of inferiority. I had those mm. so long going up, growing up in high school, college, it's horrible. And I am just grateful that, um, the Lord led me to a, a way of doing it where I didn't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. I uh, was sitting on a plane in the window seat this weekend. And, you know, um, I bored fairly early in the process. And it was a packed flight. And you know how it is when you're sitting there on, a, on an airplane. I know you know this, by the way. Don't deny it. When you're sitting on an airplane <laughs> and you're sitting there and you know it's a packed flight, so you know somebody's in that middle seat and you're watching everybody yeah. coming down the aisle going, mm -hmm. okay, good. Ooh, no. Oh, good. Oh, no. And just waiting for that person that's going to sit by you, right? Yep. And I I did. I got someone who was very overweight. Um, not, not morbidly obese, but I mean enough that I'm thinking – Okay, you can have the armrest, but I mean, I don't have much further to go into this window, right? And I thought, you know, I'm. This is really awful of me. Um, and the reality was, I, she was. I know she was uncomfortable the whole time. Um, and and there, and I, I've, I've been in places where my own weight caused me discomfort. Um, I there it. I think that the physical does something to you both emotionally and spiritually that it is a drag uh and you even point out in your book that that blaming it on genetics which is a very real thing um yeah. is also a slippery slope to depression um right if we don't tend to this do you see other ramifications that are 
even beyond the physical discomforts or health issues? Well, you know, um, you see people that, by the way, I, I'm, I topped your story. <laughs> I texted Solomon, my son, he's 17. And I said, dinosaurs are big. The person in the seat next to me could be bigger. I mean, this was, he was way over yeah. into my space. And, Rough. you know, it was a situation where he probably should have been asked to buy two tickets, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um, I just feel for these people because it's, it. as an adult, you feel like, well, I should have figured this out. Hmm. And then you lose if you do lose a bunch of weight and you've got all this extra skin mm -hmm. and you don't have any money to have surgery or insurance to have surgery then it feels so uncomfortable that many times people will gain the weight back mm -hmm. i hate it when people go get bariatric surgery or something without doing the work yeah. because they're just going to gain it back and probably it's going to be worse but now if they're working on character working on habits, things like that, then bariatric could get you down and you could maintain that. Mm -hmm. But rarely does it happen. They just look, a person looking for the quick fix instant solution and it doesn't fix anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's a very real thing. What, so walk us through some of the things you mentioned a couple of them. Um, but how, you know, how does someone who's just stuck on that cycle of, maybe dieting and then gaining it back or just, I mean, cause it, it is, it's, it's a, I think there's some point where people just give up. Yeah. How do we, well, how do we not do that? You know, um, in, you know, there's a thing overeaters anonymous, like alcoholics anonymous. And, um, there's a, there's a thing in the 12 steps that I learned from Bill Gothard. <laughs> so, you know, it, a lot of people, well, it just doesn't get much more conservative than that. But when I was in college, the thing that changed my life, I had been a Christian for quite a while, but the thing that changed my life was making amends or making things right with people that I had hurt. And man, it was so, so important that I did that. I could look people in the eye again. So that's a character growth step. And if you've got things, people have things against you and you've never made it right, you need to do that, for instance. Hmm. And, and that maybe that stops some of the triggers of shame, guilt, uh, things like that, yeah. that, that cause you to eat again. Yeah. But what I did, I walked for my exercise. I didn't do that gym thing that I literally had done twice. I just started walking. And then um, after I got that in place, I looked at what I ate and I just tried to find some things I could replace. Yeah. So ice cream, <laughs> frozen yogurt, um, muffins, bagels. And I made these substitutions, little things that I could do for the rest of my life. I could still have a treat, you know. But I didn't have the treats all the time, and it changed everything. I, you know, actually, years ago, I dropped fifty pounds, and um, I did the same thing. I did the sub. I called it the substitution diet. And I don't know if anybody's ever coined that, but I, I literally started taking the higher calorie things and just replacing them with things that I like that are lower calorie. Even to to the point of instead of a regular hamburger, I'd have a a turkey burger. You know, well, instead, you instead of man, exactly. I have mustard. I mean, and it's amazing how chicken quickly. tacos versus beef tacos. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing that I told people. I said, here's what I do. I go get an ice cream cone. I have a spoon with it. I walk over to the trash can and I take the top part off. So I've got about half as much on top of the cone <laughs> because it's still satisfying to me. Yeah. But I eliminate that. By the way, do you hear a noise in the background? Because drive me crazy there's some people downstairs outside i think they're vacuuming leaves oh yeah so yeah sorry I, if no. you hear that i have no control no i i don't hear it i don't hear it not a problem <laughs> right. i should go get them snacks ask them to quit so we finish. <laughs> give them a half snack like you eat okay yeah right. <laughs> so um he, he, when 
when we look at this um, and we spiritualize it, you know, um, I, I, someone said, there's a f- former fitness person who was on, at least Keaton was on recently, and, and she said she said something that I thought, I, I don't think I've heard anybody in this space say, which is our, our bodies are the vehicle with which we accomplish what God has put us on this earth to do. Yep. And I thought, okay, um, I sometimes I don't take care of this vehicle. I, I don't, you know, if I look at the analogy of my car, like last last week, I finally got new brake brake pads because they started squealing, and it was overdue for the oil change. And the guy was also like, you know, your spark plugs hadn't been changed since you bought this, which was eleven years ago, uh, no, nine years ago. I'm at one hundred seventeen thousand miles, and I thought, okay, if I'm going to this vehicle, this body. Uh, you know, I'm in my fifties. If, if I'm going to fulfill what God has put me on this earth to do and enjoy my life at the same time, I ought to take a little better care of it. And yeah. and that's not the same as I need to look good for the beach or, uh, you know, I no, need, I'm not trying but, to impress anybody at my age anyway. Right. But here's something. Um, we talk about get, having a state of weightlessness. Now, what we're talking about is, no longer being defined or judged by your weight before someone ever gets to know you. Hmm. Now, you know, I run new life. I'm the chairman. We hire people all the time. I can't hire someone that's 150 pounds overweight. Now somebody might say, Oh, that's horrible that you can't do that. Well, but we're a recovery ministry. We're a rest, uh, a transformation restoration ministry. And, you know, we really believe that every preacher that is overweight doesn't have to be. Mm. And if we're not modeling that, Mm -hmm. uh, then we've got a problem. And a lot of people don't get the job because before they even sit down for the interview, somebody has said that that's not going to work. This person isn't disciplined or, you know, whatever they might assume. And I don't want to be. Uh, judged by a number i need to get that number down low enough so that at least it's not so uh, glaring at somebody that they don't even care who i am is that i mean does that get you in legal trouble can you do that you can not hire somebody for whatever reason you can't (laughs) tell i mean you can't (laughs) can't are you you're too overweight but if uh, there's, a, you know, just like a person that drinks too much yeah. and comes in and looks like they've been drinking too much, yeah. I don't have to hire that person. When you look at, uh, you know, the eating issue, um, how, how do you know if, if it's bad habits or if it's uh, a thyroid or something? I mean, probably not metabolism. Uh, it's pretty rare, but you should go have it checked out. You should do the blood work, get it done and, and find out. And I really believe, okay, so let's say a person comes to Jesus. Does that fix everything? Right. No. no. You still have to be sanctified. You grow in character. I know people that have been delivered from alcoholism. Did that fix everything? No, you you didn't get delivered into character. And the people in your family didn't get delivered out of their resentment and bitterness for all the stuff they've been through. Right. So there's still growth. And any person with a weight problem that's saying i don't need to do anything well everybody needs to do everybody needs a growth plan yeah and and a, which is a discipleship plan and a sanctification plan so get with that stop doing some stuff that you used to do <laughs> when you lost weight quickly and you just might end up in 5 years looking and feeling like you never thought you could. Well, that, That's my thing. that that sounds like a different growth plan than the one that I tend to be on. <laughs> yeah. It's a spiritual growth plan, not a physical growth plan. Which is yeah. <laughs> but you know, um spiritual growth can't occur unless there's surrender. Mm. Humbly mm-hmm. surrendering. So, and and you know, surrender I I've had surrender where I cried, walked down the front of the First Baptist Church. <laughs> but there's another kind of surrender, too, and that is compliance, where you say, okay, I don't even think this thing works. I don't even like these people, but I'm going to comply. 
because I see that they don't have a weight problem. I do. Mm. So I'm just going to do what they say, even though I don't like it, don't like them. Compliance is a form of surrender that I think leads you then to a spiritual surrender. But a lot of people will never be different because they they never fully surrender and give up to God what we cannot change ourselves. Yeah, and and that that is a hard thing for for people to hear. I mean, for someone who struggled with this forever, uh, and and they just are not able to get out of it. How, how much does it help to to actually say, okay, I need help. I need to sit down. I need to talk to a, a counselor or or something because I, I really think that most of our physical problems in this area, at least, they they start up here. Oh, they really do, and. The, the problem is that these patterns get set in place many times early on. You know, you see overweight children of overweight parents, and it's really tough to combat that. And so um, I never said any of this stuff was easy. Mm. And it's hard. But everything has a, a hardness to it when it produces character growth and and a result that you've been looking for. Yeah. So if you're wanting easy, now you can find easy, but it's not going to stay. Yeah. It's going to, when you stop the easy stuff, it's going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. It tends to. All right. Well, if you need a little bit of help, you've got some, uh, you got a lot of resources on the website, newlife.com. We do. Uh, yeah. I'll show people what that looks like. There it is right there. In fact, you've got some events coming up. You want to tell people a little bit about what you're offering? Well, we've got uh, Every Man's Battle coming up. We do it uh, on the 7th of October. We've got um, on the 27th of October, we're doing a partnership with Museum of the Bible. It's a women's conference at the museum called Illumina. And it is one powerful experience. And women go back and they start Bible studies and they get active in their church. It's fantastic. We also... Uh, we have a recovery conference coming up, which I'm very excited about. And the Life Recovery Bible, Dave Stoop and I put this together. He died. We just sold the four millionth copy of a Bible, of that Bible, wow. which is just unheard of. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. All those uh, resources are available at newlife.com, by the way, if you want yeah. to check them out. Uh, you've also got a new book, and, and this is a little bit of a sideways conversation, but, uh, you know, with all the tech stuff going on and with all the weird things that we're discovering uh, from, you know, especially kids who've been raised on this. Uh, right. And people my age, older especially, they don't know what to do with this when it comes to the kids and grandkids. Uh, what, yeah. are you, what are you diving into there? Well, um, we did a, a survey of all the research and what works, and, and we found a, a kind of a shocking study that, you know, Christian parents typically just limit and that's what we did. Uh, we battened down the hatches and all of that. But research shows that that approach only uh, produces a worse result than if you were didn't really care about the Internet and just let kids do it. Now, that sounds bizarre until you hear that the best option is the third option. And that is that you limit social media, but you also engage in it with your children. You find apps, you find games. A way because that's their world and if you say i don't want any part of that you're kind of saying i don't want any part of 50 percent of your time or yeah. something yeah. so anyway it's a great little book that can help a grandparent or a parent navigate social media understanding and loving your child in a screen saturated world and that's what we live in but we appreciate you spending part of your screen time with us today and uh, i want to i want to show you the book again it is on the overeating uh, it is called 100 Days to Freedom from Overeating. It looks just like this. You can pick that up wherever you get books, as well as newlife.com. Uh, uh, and, and you know, all, all these different issues that, that we're facing, uh, whether it's, you know, dealing with the emotional health of, of a loved one or the physical health of, of ourselves. Um, Steve, I, the fact that you approach it all from a spiritual standpoint uh, it's funny because we, we pick on people's uh, actions or their words, but all of those start with our thinking. And the only way I think 
to really straighten out our thinking is to align it with with God's word. That's the healthiest place to be. No so question. I, I appreciate your effort to get people spiritually healthy or at least moving in the right direction in order to to deal with all these emotional, psychological and and physical issues. Yeah, it's got to be the foundation of everything. And just like you were saying, uh, the person said to you, your body does the stuff uh, that God wants you to do. We need to honor that body so it does a great job for as long as we can get it to do it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's the goal. Uh, and, and, and the good news is it is possible. You bet. Yep. All right. Well, man, I appreciate you. Appreciate your time and input, as always. I uh, appreciate it. I always enjoy being with you. It's great. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate all you guys out there watching. Um, hit the share button if you can politely say, hey, I think this will help you get the hint. But most of all, look, you know, I, I have to do it, especially after a conversation like this. Like, okay, what am, what am I thinking that's leading to my eating that's not healthy? Uh, and right. there are some things there, I'll be honest, so we can deal with it. Appreciate you guys out there. If you haven't liked or followed or subscribed, I would certainly appreciate that. You'll get more conversations like this. Uh, and, and check out newlife.com, and you can jump in on any of those online things. Get some good screen time in uh, and some good resources to help you and your loved ones. Appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today. Though. And truth will be on the soul of your day.